Hello, um, this video is going to cover 5.1 to 5.5 of basic English grammar. Um, if you get out your book um, and follow along, that may be helpful as well. So we're going to be talking about a variety of things in, in this video. Um, one of the things we'll talk about is, the, is about the use of it. Another thing that we will talk about is um, prepositions of time. And the last thing that we'll talk about is using there, um, both in sentences and in questions. So the first thing that we want to talk about today is about the use of the word it in time. Now, it is a preposition is, that we're familiar with, and it's normally used for things. Um, in English, we also use it when we are asking questions and also when we are answering questions about time. So this first question here says, what day is it? In this case, it is representing time. Um, so we can, we can ask the same sort of question in a variety of ways, asking about different sorts of time. So if we say, what day is it? The answer is going to be a day. And we'll notice that in the answer, in the long answer, we're going to use it as the subject. And in this case, it refers to the time. Um, we can also ask this question, what month is it? And again, in the answer, the long answer, we're going to use it as the subject. Um, it's October. Um, what year is it? It's 2015. But if we look at this last question, we'll notice that in the question, we're not using it because we're not talking about time in general. What we're talking about is a specific date. So we say, what's the date today? Um, but we notice that in the answer, we still use it as a replacement. In this case, it is really replacing the word date rather than time. But um, we can see that in, in all of the answers, we're using it uh, when we're talking about either a day, a month, a year, or the specific date. So another question we might ask is, what time is it? So in this case, what we're asking about is, is clock time. So again, it is referring in both the question and the answer to time. Um, so we can answer it, it's five, or um, it's five, or it's five o'clock or it's 5 p.m. or 5 o'clock p.m. There's a difference between the writing of the number time in American English and British English. So in American English, you'll notice that we use um, a colon in between the five and the zero, zero. Um, in British English, however, they use a period um, between, between those two. Uh, since we're in America, I'd encourage you to learn the American way um, of writing. So if we look at these, we can answer these questions. Um, so go ahead and take a second, just pause, pause the video for a second, and in your mind or on a piece of paper, answer these four questions here. So A, what day is it? Well, right now, uh, it's Wednesday. What month is it? For me, uh, it's February. What year is it? It's 2019. And what's the date today? We would say it's um, February 20th or the 20th of February. Either one of those is okay. So let's do a little bit more practice here. So in this picture, the woman is asking, what day is it? And we can see here down here that it says Sunday. So our answer is going to start with it. And we're going to say it's Sunday. Here, I, we're given the answer. So it's Tuesday. Tuesday. So the question is going to be, what day is it? Um, here we're given a specific date. So it's November 29th. So remember, the question is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be, uh, sorry, I don't know why it does this. It should be, what, what's the date? But what day is it, it giving us February 29th? Um, it, in this one here, we're given the time. So the question is going to be, what time is it? Um, here we're given a specific date, and my hope is that this is giving is the question about the date. So this one should be, what's the date today? Um, in, in this case, we have the, the day, the month, and the year. 
So moving on to prepositions of time. Now, uh, students often ask about how to use prepositions. Remember, pre prepositions are words like in, on, over, above. They tell a lot of different things. Some of them tell time. Some of them tell um, location. Um, but the problem is, is that in English, there's so many of them that they can be very confusing. So what you want to do is, is just memorize them in pieces. In this one, we're only going to look at about four different prepositions here that have to do with time. So work on learning these ones, and then you'll be able to learn more as we go along. So uh, if we look at this one, uh, we eat breakfast in the morning. The preposition in this sentence is in. Well, notice that af after the preposition, we have a noun. In this case, the morning um, is a so the first preposition of time that we want to talk about is at. So at is used in two different ways. Um, one way it is used uh, is with a specific time. So we get up at 5 a.m. And by specific time, we mean a time on the clock. Um, here again, a time on the clock. We ex exercise at 2 p.m. But the other way that, that at is used is with the word night. And this is an exception um, because this is not a specific time, right? Night is a, a, a period of time. It's not just one time on the clock. It's a long period of time. But in English, we use at for night. Don't ask me why, but we do. Because now when we're looking at this in, we're going to get uh, we're going to look at some different things. Now, one of the ways I always remember in is that in always means uh, something similar to inside. So if you're inside something, the thing that you're inside has to be big, has to be bigger than you, right? So school starts in September. So September has 30 days, so we can fit in um, September. Uh, she went to Florida in 2005. 2005 is a year that has 12 months. It's a big thing, so we can go in it. And we can also say, I take a walk in the morning. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because we've already said that with night we use at, but we don't use, uh, we don't use at with in the morning. This follows the rule. If we think about morning, the morning is made up of many different hours, right? So it's a big thing. So it makes sense that you're in it. The other ones that are like this, um, that follow this rule are in the afternoon. So the afternoon, again, is many hours. Or um, in the evening, right? The evening is many hours. For some reason, night is different. So with on, um, on is used for a specific day or a specific date. So we're talking about one, one day. So on Tuesday, just that day, um, or on March 3rd, 2005, just that one day. So on is just used with a specific day. The last one we're gonna talk about is this um, from to two. So I work from nine to uh, 5 p.m. So from is followed by a, a clock time and then two is also followed by another clock time. So let's look at these ones. So again, what we want to, uh, when choosing prepositions, we want to focus on the word that comes after the preposition. The words that come before it are less important. So in the first one, um, the word that comes after the space is Monday. Monday is a specific day, so this is going to be on. The second one, uh, July comes after it. July is a month. A month is made up of many days. It's a big thing, so it's going to be in. Uh, in the last one, we have 2 a.m. 2 a.m. is a specific time on the clock, so this one is going to be at. Let's look at this next one. Again, so here we have two spaces, and we have a time, and another time. So this one is going to be from and to. Um, so this one, again, we have two times, but we have to look at what comes after the space. Sorry, we have two spaces, but we have to look at what comes after the space before we say, oh, this is from and to because it's two spaces. 
Now the first one is a clock time, so, okay. If the second one was also a clock time, then yeah, we would use from and to. But if we look at the second one, the second one is a day. So we can't use from and to, because from and to, they both have to be clock times. So the first one is going to be at, because that's for a specific time, and the second one's gonna be on, because that's for um, a, a specific time. So here, afternoon, we talked about this. The afternoon is made up of many hours, so this one's going to be in. All right, so the other thing that uh, that it is used for is to talk about the weather. So here we say it's a beautiful day at the beach. In this case, the it is referring to what the weather is like. So we can say it's hot today, it's a nice day, it's cold and rainy today. In all of these cases, it is referring to the, the weather. Um, keep in mind that in English, we have to use the it in these sentences. In some other languages, we don't have to include the e, it, but in English, we do have to include an it. For so, but if we look at the questions, we notice that um, when we were asking about time, the questions would use it, uh, it as well. Uh, so we could say, what time is it? Um, but in this case, we need to actually use the weather. So there's two ways to ask about the weather. We can say, what's the weather like in Cairo? Or how's the weather in Cairo? Both of these two have the same basic meaning. Um, so if we look at these ones, we have a chart of Amman, Jordan, um, uh, uh, Mexico City, and, and Perth. Um, so the first question is, what's the weather like in Amman? So the first thing it says there is, is sun, and then the temperatures is 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. So we would say um, it's sunny and hot. How's the weather in Mexico City? Well, if we look there, it says it's got rain and it's 64 degrees or 18 degrees Celsius. So um, it's it's um, warm and rainy. The next one, what's the weather like in Perth? So we have clouds and it's 47 degrees Fahrenheit and eight degrees Celsius. So in this case, we would say it's cloudy and cool. So the next two, uh, the next two chapters or, or, or portions are about using there. Um, so in this one, in the sentence, we have, there is a girl on the horse. Now, this is an interesting construction in English that's different than what we normally have. Normally, in an English sentence, we have there, uh, sorry, we have the subject and then the verb. But if we look here, the construction is a little bit differently. We have there, which is sitting in the place where normally the subject goes, and then we have the verb to be, but then the subject actually comes after the verb to be. Um, so again, whether it's singular or plural, the subject is coming after the verb to be. So we have there plus be, and what this means is it's, it's explaining that something exists in a place. So you're describing what is actually there or what exists there. Um, we, but we put be in front of the subject. And so if the subject is singular, we use is, and if the subject is plural, we're going to use are. We do also have these contractions for there. There's theirs and their. Um, I'd, I'd advise you not to use these ones in writing. Particularly the second one is going to be pretty difficult for you to um, uh, pronounce. There are, so there are two boys on the swing. And definitely the second one is one you never want to use in writing. The first one, it's okay, but really the second one you should avoid in writing. So if you just avoid these in general in writing, you're going to be okay. So in this one, we say there a house in this picture. So remember that we have to look after um, where the verb goes for the subject. So we have a house, and is that singular or plural? It's singular, so it's going to be there is a house. Okay? Um, and is there a house in the picture? Yeah. There is one. It looks a little bit creepy. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, so in this one, again, we're going to look after the space, and we see three elephants. So that one is going to be um, plural. 
so we're going to use R. So is this true? Do you see any elephants in the picture? No. So this is actually incorrect. Um, in this one, again, after the space, we see bugs, which is plural. So we would use er. So there are three bugs in this picture. Do you see any bugs? No. Um, next one here. Um, we have uh, two spaces here. So in the first space, we look after that one and we see girl, and that's singular. So we're going to use theirs. After that one, we have another space, and we want to look at um, the horse. Um, and, and in this case, we want to have the preposition on, on the horse. But is there a girl on the horse? No, there's not. Um, here we have there, a man, and the car. So again, this is going back to the earlier chapter when we talked about prepositions of location. So a man is singular, so it's going to be theirs. The car, um, is it at the car or in the car? In this case, it's going to be in the car. There's a man in the car, yes or no? Yes, there is. So in terms of yes, no questions here, this is where it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit um, um, confusing. Or I can't. So when we're making a question, normally we have the verb, the auxiliary verb, the helping verb, and then the subject follows that. But in this case, what we're doing is we're putting the word there between the verb to be and the subject. So we say, um, is there any ice in the glass? Um, the short answer is going to be, yes, there is. Um, or if it's negative, no, there, there aren't. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that there is actually going in the place where a subject normally should go in a sentence, which means that when we make the short answer, the subject that we use is there rather than um, apples or in the, in the previous one, I forget what it was, the pronoun for the subject. We're going to use there. So in this one, are there any people in this picture? We can say, yeah, yes. So are we going to say, yes, there are, or yes, there is? We're going to say, yes, there are, because it's plural. Are there any people in this picture? No. So people um, is singular or plural. It's plural. So we're going to say, no, there aren't. Um, is there a school in this picture? So I don't see a school, so it's going to be no. So is it going to be no, there aren't, or no, there isn't? And it's going to be no, there isn't, because um, school is singular. OK? Um, here, here we go. Um, is there a window in this picture? I see several of them. So we're going to say yes. Yes, there is. OK? So the thing that I'd encourage you to do now is to go into the book and do, uh, do the activities. We'll review this um, in class before we take the, the quiz. All right. Stay warm. Take care. Bye.